In today's video, I'll be showing you how to install an SSD for audio production, as well as measuring the advantages in both speed and noise. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So I'm finally getting rid of the last mechanical hard drive in my audio production PC and I'm upgrading it to an SSD. Now I'm expecting to see some nice improvements in terms of performance as well as a decrease in the amount of noise which is generated by my PC in my studio. Now SSDs can be installed in a couple of different ways, either internally or externally. I'll be showing you both of those and I'll also be measuring the results. Now as well as this of course I am interested in how much noise reduction I get so I'm measuring the results both technically and with some real world examples as well. So stick around for all of that but first before we get started if you do like this kind of content all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plugin reviews, that kind of thing then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. Now let's get started by taking a look at the SSD which I chose for this upgrade. I've decided to use a 2.5 inch 960 gigabyte Kingston A400 SSD for this upgrade. I actually already have a couple of them in my system and I'm really pleased with their performance for the price. You can get them from 120 to 1920 gigabyte versions and they have read write speeds of 500 and 450 megabytes per second. You can check them out at the link in the description below. So before I get started with the upgrade, I'm gonna be running some technical tests on the performance of my old mechanical hard drive to see what kind of increase we get with the SSD later. But more importantly, in my opinion, I'm also gonna be running some real world tests using some actual sample libraries and seeing how long they take to load on the old hard drive compared to the new one. Now, my old hard drive is mostly full of sample libraries and as we know, they can be rather large and slow to load so it'll be interesting to see the results. I'll be saving them and I'll be comparing them with the SSD results later in the video. My next consideration is noise. As you can see, my computer has what is called an open case, and a few people have commented that they think this kind of case would be too noisy for music production, but I think they're wrong. You see, most cases have one or two fans at the front to draw in air, and another exhaust fan at the back. This case needs none of those potentially noisy fans. It does have a couple of fans for liquid cooling, but these are semi-passive, meaning they only spin when required. It in my experience, that's very little during music production and more when I'm video editing and gaming. Exactly the same applies for my graphics card, which also has semi-passive fans, and the same applies to my power supply. My guess is that the noisiest component in my computer at the moment is that old mechanical hard drive, and so I went about recording how loud it is for comparison later. I took a measurement with the PC switched off to get a baseline reading, and then I measured it with it on and that noisy old hard drive. I also set up a mic in the middle of the room with the gain set to 27 on my audio interface, which is very typical for a vocal recording in my studio. Have a listen. So installing an SSD externally using an enclosure like this is really, really easy and just takes a few moments and you really don't have to have any special skills for it. There are some slight disadvantages to this in that the performance won't be quite as good as an SSD which is actually inside the computer itself. However, it does have some advantages. Firstly, it's much more mobile. If you're using your sound libraries in different locations on different computers, computers, then this is really your best option. Secondly, if you're using a laptop or a Mac, you just may find it's more trouble than it's worth to do an internal installation. So we'll be looking at this method first, and of course we'll be measuring it. So in order to attach the SSD, we need to put it in an enclosure so that it can be connected to the computer. I'm using this Orico enclosure, which I'll put a link to in the description down below. Opening the enclosure is easy as the top simply slides off. We then slide the SSD onto the connection and don't worry, there's only one way that it can fit. 
We then slide the top back on and attach the USB cable. We can then connect it to our PC. Once you have your drive connected to your PC, you need to prepare it for use. This varies depending on your operating system, but for me here in Windows 10, I type in disk in the search bar and then select create and format hard disk partitions. This actually opens up the Windows Disk Manager. Here I click on OK to let Windows initialize the disk and I remember the disk number here. Using that disk number, I then find my new disk and I right click on it to create a new simple volume. I continue to click next and then label the disk with a temporary name. I finish and let Windows format the drive. I then go ahead and start copying everything from my old mechanical drive to my new SSD. This will take a while, in my case, two hours. Now I go back to my disk management and I change the drive letter of the old drive to some available letter. It really doesn't matter which one. And I also rename it. I then change the drive letter of my new drive to that of the old one. This ensures that my programs and plugins look for files on the new drive. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do some speed tests of this USB connected SSD. But before I reveal them to you, Let's take a look at how I can connect this drive internally. Now most modern PCs have chassis to hold either mechanical or SSD drives. The inside of your PC is most likely quite different to mine in that the chassis will be horizontal rather than vertical. Each case is different so you'll have to check yours out but normally these hard drive chassis are quite easy to remove. I'm going to start by removing my old drive so I unplug both the larger power cable and the smaller data cable. I then remove the one screw holding the chassis in I ease it forward and lift it out. The old hard drive is just held in with clips in the chassis so I remove those clips to completely remove the drive. I then screw the SSD to the chassis and I like to use all four screws for this. I then attach the chassis back to the case and plug in both the data cable and the power cable. Now these cables have a kind of an L shape to them so they can't be plugged in the wrong way. The other end attaches to one of the SATA connections on your motherboard. You may want to temporarily leave your old drive connected so that you can transfer data. But in my case, this was already done. So now let's go ahead and test the results. Okay, so the technical speed test results are not too surprising. For the old hard drive, it has a read speed with large files of around about 128 megabytes per second and a write speed of around about 68 megabytes per second. Now for smaller files, it has a read speed of around about 0.83 megabytes per second and 0.65 megabytes per second for writing. Now let's take a a look at how that compares to the SSD when it's connected to a USB and you can see a massive change in speeds. It has a read speed for large files of around about 425 megabytes per second and also a write speed of 447 megabytes per second. So if you're actually using this disk to actually record your projects to, and it's writing to disk a lot, then you'll see a big performance increase here especially. But even for the read speed, we're getting what between three and four times the speed there. So it's a massive increase in speed. And for smaller files, we see an even bigger dramatic dramatic speed increase for reading and also for writing. It's reading at 179 megabytes per second and writing at 171. So the biggest thing that I see there is not only the speeds quicker, but the writing ability is much, much quicker for this drive when it's plugged into the USB. Now the thing is, Plugging it in via USB is the easy way of doing things. It's a little bit more difficult to uh, put it in internally. And do is it worth it? You know, do we see a big enough increase? Well, take a look at this. Now, the new readings when we had it installed internally is 466 megabytes per second for a read speed. 
that's not sort of that dramatically different. And also for the write speed, um, which I know is quicker, it's at 509 megabytes per second, even a little bit quicker than the manufacturer's guide for that. So yeah, there's, there's a big difference there. But it's when we look at the smaller file transfer speed, I mean, it's getting close to sort of double the speed there when we look at the small ones. We're getting a reading of 331 megabytes per second um, for reading and writing is 358. And it, it just basically eclipses the old hard drive um, in terms of this. Now that's all very well and it's all numbers and it's all good, but how does that equate to a real world experience? experience. So I decided to do a test using Superior Drummer and loading in a fairly large kit. There's a little progress indicator at the top right corner of Superior Drummer so that you can see when a kit is completely loaded. I've set all three against each other. One, the old hard drive version right at the top there. The bottom left, we've got the SSD version connected by USB. And the bottom right, we've got the SSD version connected by SATA. So let's click play on this video and see how they went against each other. Okay, we can see the internal ones done, quickly followed by the USB. The old hard drive still going and, and it's finished after around about 15 seconds or so. So it's taken about twice as long. And this is where you've got to be careful with those sort of technical tests. There is, they don't always correlate because if you remember with the technical test, you know, the, the SSDs were kind of four, maybe almost as fast as four times as fast. But remember, the, it's not the only thing happening here. We're not just loading in um, uh, data from, from the disk. You know, this is also processing the data as well. But you do get a massive speed increase. Let's have a check of another plugin though. So this time we're in Trillion and we're going to load in a fairly large base library. Same deal again, the old hard drive at the top, the SSD with USB connected um, on the bottom left and then the SATA internal drive on the bottom right. Let's see how we went with this base plugin. So a big library this, you can see that the two SSDs have taken almost exactly the same amount of time. And then finally, the hard drive finishes after 16 seconds. Again, not you know twice as slow this time. There is a big difference though still. Now, the real impact of this happens is when you've got big projects with lots of virtual instruments and plugins and things like that on them and you go to open those projects because this is just one instrument. You start to multiply that when you've got 10, 15, 20 instruments and it can really take a long time to load up some of these larger projects from an old mechanical hard drive. So I wanted to get an idea of how much improvement I got in terms of reducing noise with this upgrade. So I took some measurements using an app on my phone and I took them all from five centimeters above the case of my PC. Now the first measurement I took was with everything switched off, my PC and everything in the room apart from a couple of lights. And I wanted to do this to, to see how much uh, noise I got when I switched my PC on with the old hardware drive in. So the measurement I got was between seven and eight decibels. Now remember, nothing's ever completely silent. The room isn't completely silent, the environment isn't. And also uh, there'd be a bit of noise on the audio system on the phone itself. So we started off with that baseline reading of seven to eight decibels. I then went ahead and turned on the PC and everything else in my system to get a measurement of what was happening then. And there was quite a big increase as I'd suspected. Now the reading went up to between 10 and 16 decibels at 
peak. That may not sound like much, but it's really quite a lot in reality to have a whole eight decibels more at peak with those readings. I wasn't at all surprised by this, and this meant that I had a, a representation of what was going on in my system before the upgrade. Now, I also set up a microphone in the middle of the room in a typical position, and I also had it set to a very typical level that I'd have it at to record vocals. And that's what you're listening to now. So then of course I went ahead and I upgraded my system with the SSD and I took more measurements and I was really, really happy with the results. The new readings were between seven and nine decibels, a really, really marginal increase over a completely silent room with everything switched off. So I'm really pleased with the result I got here. Again, I took another recording with the microphone in the middle of the room and you can have a listen to that now. So I have to say I'm really pleased with the results of this upgrade. What was holding me back before was the cost of SSDs versus the advantages that you get from the upgrade. But I really feel like the cost has come down so much now, especially with the kind of capacities that we need for audio production, that it's really worth you considering upgrading. So check the links down in the description for both the SSD and the enclosure. Now if you have any questions at all, please do ask in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. That really helps me out. It tells YouTube to show this video to other people. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you are notified about my future videos. And I'll see you in the next video.